This is Friedberg, one of the oldest towns in Bavaria. It can trace its history as far back as the age of the Roman Empire. This is one of the newest products in the Bavarian Empire. It is the product of Bavarian Motor Works and it has a much shorter history. This, on the other hand, is the Bavarian countryside and it obviously stretches way back past even the Roman Empire and that's what makes it so very, very important. It's why the world's manufacturers are trying so very hard to switch vehicles to electric propulsion. BMW has been around since 1916, but this electric scooter's pedigree is more recent and effectively began back in 2009 with the C1e concept. You'll no doubt remember BMW C1, the scooter with a roof. Well, this was that, but fitted with an electric motor. Eventually that would morph into the C Evolution that went on sale in 2014 as BMW's first electric scooter and it resembled their own C600 scooter and was good. Fun to ride in spite of the pretty spectacular weight and in some places it was even a runaway sales hit, even though it was hampered by a significant price increase over the equivalent petrol model. Best sales in the world were in, have a guess, Paris. Yeah, a city where the scooter is an advantage, but certainly not quite as scootery a scene as some Italian or Spanish cities, so I thought that was a bit surprising. But with its green credentials and decent performance, it went down a treat with the well-heeled Parisian inner-city commuting class. In 2017, BMW gave us the concept link that three years later became the Definition CEO4 concept, and that in itself, just a year later, became this. Yeah, for once the concept managed to make it into production without losing too much of its conceptness. So, what do you think? Do you like the modern looks? I do. A lot. I like that they've made the attempt to present a, as they would call it, a different design language than the traditional maxi scooter. Look back at the CE Evolution and you see a scooter that looks very much like its petrol powered relatives and yet it had batteries and an electric motor and some green paint, almost as an afterthought. The CE04 has obviously been designed with the clear intention to make it different to its fossil fuel burning relatives, to make it distinct and identifiable quickly, even from a distance. Lots of straight lines, solid wheels, it's certainly fresh. But while I'm praising it, I might as well burst the bubble a bit and be me. And by that I mean have a bit of a moan. The solid wheels, surely there's opportunity here for some kind of clever colours or design work of some sort, especially on the rear, which at the moment looks like nothing more than a second-rate Mari biscuit. To non-South Africans, that means it looks like a car's space saver spare wheel. You can pay a couple of hundred rand for some sad stickers, but they're, they're so dull they should be standard. I can't believe they're even charging anything at all for them. And on the other side of the wheel, we've got the belt drive, which also looks a bit unfinished, a bit too industrial. Maybe that's the look they're going for, but since the rear end is so clean and uncluttered for a scooter, thanks to the clever packaging of the electric propulsion, then the eye naturally gravitates to what is here, and that's the wheel and belt drive. Okay, I can just about accept my ignorance of design and let that go in the interests of clean simplicity, but what about this? It's extra storage space in the shape of an optional box that has been very thoughtfully fitted to my test unit and has already proved itself useful for carrying the cameras that I would normally put in a rucksack. Unfortunately, it's a box. <laughs> a box costing several hundred euros with the fittings or heading on for 10,000 rand or so. And it is horrible. It is quite clever. Check out how it expands. But it's the looks that grate on me. I know, I know. Simplicity, straight lines, function over form and all that. But it's, yeah, it's still horrible. A flash of colour, orange maybe. And perhaps something that doesn't look like it's been borrowed straight off the back of a GS. Surely something a bit more interesting. I'm no fashionista, but even I'm upset to have to ride around on this wonderful looking scooter with this boil of a thing perched on the back end. 
And then, before I start gushing about the good stuff again, and there's undoubtedly a huge amount of good stuff to gush about, this plastic here at the front end, it hurts my sensibilities. To a certain extent, it's the same thing on the front there where there's literally a half-hearted attempt to break up all the oppressive dark plastic, but it's more egregious in its assault on my senses here where I've got to look at it all the time and occasionally brush up against it and realize that yes, it is as cheap and nasty to the touch as it is to look at. On a scooter that is a standard bearer on whose coattails will inevitably arrive a further deluge of models with a price that says it doesn't care about poor people and is admittedly and understandably going for a wealthy niche of early adopters, the use of a material that you'd usually find gracing a five euro Chinese radio is unacceptable. What isn't unacceptable though, is the riding experience, which at the risk of sounding like a gibbering fanboy is absolutely fantastic. Superb. Beyond even my wildest expectations, basically. So good, in fact, that if you've got the money and are willing to pay the steep price tag to be one of the earliest of the early adopters, then there really is no reason to buy even the best of the normal petrol powered maxi scooters. Because this CE04 is well, it's a century ahead of the whole lot of them. OK, maybe not a century, but a long way. Obviously, the interesting new stuff concerns the electric propulsion, and it's all very impressive. But before I do that, I want to mention the chassis and the handling, because they're also excellent. Pushing this thing around to film some details, and by the way, to be able to do that, you need to take the side stand off because that acts as a brake. I like that, nice cool little detail. Yeah, pushing it around, you don't have to be a genius to notice <laughs> that it is a pretty heavy thing. How heavy? Well, 231 kilograms, which is not that bad, really. Not great, because an equivalent 400cc petrol powered scooter will probably be at least 10 to 15 percent less porky but if you compare it to its predecessor the c evolution you're looking at a 40 kilogram saving between that generation and this so there's some definite signs of improvement and with all the weighty batteries being situated quite so low once you're on the move it really isn't the sort of weight that impacts too negatively on the scooter's ability to turn or brake or deal with some iffy road surfaces. And it's that last bit, the way it soaks up some less than perfect road surfaces really makes me pay attention. On top of all the headline grabbing electrical stuff, it shows they haven't forgotten about the suspension. The way it isolates the rider for some really dodgy road surfaces, that's very impressive indeed. And you know what? I think the extra weight it's carrying may actually be helping it out in this case. But on top of that ability to glide over the rough stuff, it maintains a firm sort of composure should you want to lean and brake and accelerate harder than is strictly necessary. You know, have some good old fashioned back roads fun. This thing is well up to a blast in the country and I wasn't really expecting that. And I don't think <laughs> I was expecting it to be quite this rapid either. I'm having to really concentrate to keep the speed down to the 100 km an hour limit on this road. But if I do get a bit carried away, inadvertently, of course, and the speeds climb higher, and then I come across a corner like this, no worries. You just have to have the confidence to, well, basically to lob it in and feel the chassis working underneath you. It's really very stable, very confidence-inspiring. And if you perhaps need to climb into the brakes in a hurry, absolutely no worries there, because with three brake discs, it does a proper job of stopping. Feels more like a 
a bike than a scooter then, that's for sure. But it's this stuff, the silent operation, the slow speed balance and maneuverability, the dealing with traffic. I knew it would have to be good at this and it really is very, very good at it. But it's that other type of riding, that uh, riding just because it's fun sort of stuff. I thought it might have been too sensible, too serious, too interested in saving the planet to be any good at that. But thankfully it isn't. It's really very good at that unnecessary sort of riding when it's all just about the pleasure, the joy of being on two wheels. OK, time now to delve into the electrical bits and pieces. The battery provides 8.9 kilowatt hours of power and is effectively a very slightly modified version of one of the iX electric BMW SUV's batteries, although it obviously has 11 of them. The electric motor is good for 42 horsepower and sits behind the battery, and it too comes from BMW's car division since it is effectively one third of the motor found on BMW's X1 hybrid. Keeping the batteries low and the motor to the rear means there is still some room for a storage compartment under the seat where you can fit a full face helmet and even squeeze in your recharging cable. It's accessed from the side. The fact that there is some clear air between the seat and the storage shows that practicality wasn't necessarily at the top of the design priorities when the CE04 began to take shape and given how good this thing looks I'm okay with that. The riding modes are road and rain and eco, which come as standard with this particular test demo model having the dynamic package, which adds the most sporty riding mode and also beefs up the standard traction control and ABS into cornering lean angle sensitive versions of themselves. Each riding mode has a different feel with road and dynamic being the most sporty and actually feeling the closest to each other. Experienced riders will want to use these all the time as long as they don't mind the inevitable contraction of the scooter's range. With a nearly completely silent operation, the CE04 is a joyous thing to slide up to the traffic lights with. Nobody even notices you arrive until you get in their peripheral vision. And then when the time is right, you can simply <laughs> accelerate away and be gone before they've even thought about putting the clutch in and slipping it into first. It's really, really very fun. These two modes have the least regenerative braking effect, which is basically a sort of engine braking that is converting the kinetic energy of that process into electric energy that gets stored in the battery. Eco is unsurprisingly the, uh, the most economical mode and it will ensure you get the greatest range. It softens the throttle response and power, but it's still plenty quick enough to deal with all but the most determined supercar driver away from the lights. I really enjoy this mode because it's got a good strong engine braking effect. So if you read the road and the traffic in particular and read it well, there really is almost no need at all to touch the brakes. Like ever, you can even come to a complete standstill just by rolling off the throttle. And the transition between on the throttle off the throttle, on the throttle again, even though there is that engine braking, it's utterly seamless. It's this complete ease of use, this utter civility with the way it behaves that will endear it to novices and to experienced riders alike. It really does feel like a quality piece of kit. And I'm sure you'll say that it really should be a quality product when you realize that the model I was riding admittedly smothered in a very long list of expensive optional extras would set you back somewhere in the region of 260, 270,000 Rand. Okay, in its most basic guise, it will retail for a more palatable 190,000 Rand or so, but that's still big bike money for a fancy scooter. There again, that's the same money 
here in Europe at least, that Yamaha is asking for its top spec T-Max Tech Max. So when you put it like that and consider all the new technology and gadgets that the Yamaha doesn't have, and it begins to look like something of a bargain. A couple of things I didn't mention in the test, and that's the top speed, which is electronically limited to 128 k's an hour on the speedo. Acceleration is brisk. How brisk? Watch this. Let's go and accelerate. Keep your eye on the speed. <laughs> ah, okay, the first 70 k's or so is really quick. Tails off a bit then, but. Um, Range, well, that in theory, and I suppose with a careful throttle hand and using eco mode, should be about 130 kilometers. Use it in dynamic mode all the time and use full throttle acceleration everywhere, always, and that's going to drop down to somewhere in the 80 to 90 kilometer sort of area, I would think. My first trip on picking up the bike was 42 kilometres. I rode sensibly in eco mode, apart from one blast away from the lights each in road and dynamic mode, just to get a feel for it. And at the end of my 42 kilometre trip, I'd used 51 kilometres of the available 128k range when I set off. Even ridden really sensibly, I think it's going to be quite difficult to reach that 130 kilometre mark very often. Get 100 kilometers or so done and your range anxiety will be going into overdrive and your BMW connected app will be out as you search for the nearest charging station. But, but, given that this scooter's objective is to master the urban environment, I'd have to say the range is plenty for its intended use. If you commute between your work in the city centre and your house in the burbs, then as long as it's less than 50 kilometers each way, you're in the clear, especially if you can charge up while it's parked at work, of course. You get a standard charging cable with the bike that you can plug into any wall socket and it will take four hours and 20 minutes to fill it up from completely empty. Get the fast charging cable though, a snip at about 15,000 Rand or so, and you reduce that time to one hour and five minutes with an appropriate charging point, obviously. Another point that I really appreciated was the traditional layout, along with that lovely TFT screen that we also had on the top of the range Touring K1600 GTL that I tested last week. By that, by the traditional layout kind of thing, I mean that if you've ridden a petrol powered BMW, then everything will be completely familiar. All the same switch gear, even to the extent that there's a kill switch come starter button, even though when you fire it up, so to speak, there's no combustion going on at all. So there you have it, a brilliant, really a genuinely brilliant second generation of electric scooter from BMW. All we need in South Africa now is some reliable electricity generation and you might even consider getting yourself one. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week with a taste of the future. We'll see you again on the next episode of The Bike Show. So all that's left to say is cheers for now.